Grogan. Hello, Ralph. Do things happen to you on your bus like the things that happen to me on my bus? What do you mean? Today, I'm driving a bus. I'm down around 18th Street, and some dame gets on the bus with a little kid. So the bus is crowded. I said, will everybody kindly step to the rear of the bus? She says, do you mind if my son stays up front with you? So I figure she's a passenger. I'll show her a lot of courtesy. I said, no, madam, that's OK. He can stay with me. Well, we get up to about 52nd Street, and she's got to get off the bus. So she comes up, she takes the kid, and she says, I want to thank you very much for letting the kid sit up front. I says, that's all right. I said, we like to treat the passengers that way. She said, I would have taken him in the back with that crowd, except he's got the measles. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder, don't any of those screwballs ever ride the subway? I don't know, Grogan. Well, I got to get back to my bus. See you later, Ralph. All right, pal. Who's here, Robbie Boy? Hey. <laughs> Did you see Phil? I just left him. He yeah. gave me all the dope. And I got a picture here at the place. No kidding. Let me yeah, see it. There it is. Boy, Norton, it's beautiful. It's even better than I expected. And to think that soon this will be our business. That's right. We will be respected business members of the community. We'll get invited to, uh, we'll get invited to join country clubs. Alice and Trixie will have fur coats. Boy, I'm telling you, this is going to make us rich. This is the dream of a lifetime. Yep. Our own hot dog stand. <laughs> boy, oh boy. Can you picture the place? Ralph and Ed's. Yeah. Ed and Ralph. <laughs> Look at it, Norton. There's the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That ain't no pot of gold. It's a pot of mustard. Hey, look, are you sure that Phil is still willing to sell at that price? Yeah, $600. And listen, we got to act fast and snap it up before somebody else does. I'm telling you, it's a gold mine. It's on the busiest highway in New Jersey. Guy with as good a business like that and he wants to get rid of it, he must be crazy. Well, he had to get rid of it. That hot dog stand made him so much money last year that he's got to sell it to pay his taxes. Well, come on, let's sit down and eat our lunch. Yeah. talk about it. OK. You know, we'll probably have to start small in this thing. But it's kind of filled into a big thing. Mark my word. You know, a lot of guys have started in this racket. Small, you know. Take Needick, for instance. Started out with one hot dog stand. Yeah. Now he's worth millions of dollars. Yeah. You know something, Ralph? Why? I think we ought to bought Needick's. <laughs> you know something? This is a lifetime dream come true for me. You know, all my life, I wanted to be my own boss. But I've always worked for somebody else. And I've worked hard, too. Look at me, slaving away today, and what am I doing? Driving a bus. What kind of a job did I have before this? <laughs> Sweeping out a bakery. Before that, a helper on a meat truck. I've worked hard all my life, Norton. I've slaved. You realize I'm the only kid in the third grade that had to play hooky to go to work? <laughs> A sweet kid. <laughs> no. Taking this place up and making it into a big hot dog stand ain't gonna be so no better road. You know, we gotta work hard. I know that. Still it starts paying off. We gotta get these jobs shipped to nighttime. We'll work at night at these jobs. Me at the bus, you in the sewer. <laughs> then we can give the whole day to the hot dog stand. Anything you say, Father? Won't be so bad, me driving a bus at night. At least there'll be less traffic. With my job, it don't make no difference anyway. Once they put the manhole cover on the sewer, you can't tell night from day anyway. <laughs> you know, the more I look at this, and I've, I've looked at every angle of it, the better it seems. The way I got it figured, we'll make money every day, see? But Sunday will be our big day. I figure about a thousand cars have got to pass the hot dog stand. Well, out of every hundred cars, at least ten have got to stop at our place. That's a hundred cars. Now, in each car, there's at least four people. Now, if they want each hot dogs and soda pop, that means that we'll have to serve 400 hot dogs and 400 bottles of soda pop every hour for 12 hours every Sunday. Hmm. I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead. Could I have Sundays off? <laughs> Will you stop asking silly questions? Well, hey, 
I got to get back to work. Okay, fine. I'm late. Listen, I'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget, in the morning, we got to meet Phil with the money. Don't worry, I'll be here with my share. Okay. Now that we got this whole thing set up, I'll tell Alice about it. She'll be tickled pink. Okay. See you later, partner. Okay, pal. Yes, sir. A week from this very time, we'll be in our own business. Ralph and Ed's. Ed and Ralph. <laughs> is in a joint account. It's as much mine as it is yours, and I say no. You say no, huh? I don't care what you say. I'm getting a hot dog stand, see? Now, I'll tell you why, Ralph. That money has been in that account, and that's for our old age. And I'm not letting you spend that money on some harebrained scheme of yours after I have scrimped and saved and done without all... You scrimped and saved? What about me? I haven't bought anything for myself that wasn't an absolute necessity in the last five years. Oh, you haven't, have you? No, I haven't. Well, what about the bowling ball that you bought last month? I suppose that was an absolute necessity. It certainly is. You can't bowl without it, can you? <laughs> Listen, Ralph, what do you know anyhow about running a hot dog stand? What do you have to be, an Einstein to open up a hot dog stand? It runs by itself. Well, you have to wait us for Sunday. The roads are jam-packed with cars. You buy a thousand hot dog rolls, a thousand hot dogs, and you sell them, that's all. What can happen? It can rain on Sunday. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Every time I try to better myself, you got to put a block in front of me. The time I wanted to go into the used tire business with my brother Willie, you said nobody would buy used tires. Then I wanted to go into the rug shampooing business. You said nobody wanted to have their rugs cleaned. Now that I hit on a perfect scheme, a hot dog stand, what do you do? You gotta make it rain on my busiest day. <laughs> you can save your breath, Ralph. You can't get that money without my signature, and I have no intention of signing. Is that so? Well, that money is mine just as well as it's yours, you know. I'm the breadwinner in this family. I'm the one that works for the money. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't have it. Oh, I wouldn't. Well, just a minute here, Ralph Cramden. There's a hundred dollars in that account that was a wedding present to me from my Aunt Helen. There's twenty-five dollars that my boss gave me when I quit my job. There happens to be ten dollars in there that was a birthday present from my mother. And there's another twenty that I made myself selling Christmas cards last year. Our bank balance is a hundred and fifty-eight dollars, and if my arithmetic is correct, your half of that money is three dollars. <laughs> I know that. But if I hadn't worked steady, you would have had to take the money out of the bank to buy food with it. Now, look, I don't care what you say. I'm going to open up that hot dog stand, and I want that money. Do you hear me? I want that money. And I say absolutely and positively no. Oh. Is that what you say? <laughs> That's what you say, huh? I don't know what it is with you. Every time I try to make a success of myself, you start in. I just want to do something to make you proud of me. Ever since we've been married, all your mother says is that I'm a no good and I'll never amount to anything. Here's my chance to prove it. Now look. <laughs> you gotta give me that money, Alice. You gotta give it to me. No. Okay, Alice. Okay. I've been a pretty easy guy to live with all these years. I don't ask much. I don't go any place. I don't want anything for myself. I just want it for you. But you've said no once too often. Once too often have you said no to me. You've pushed me too far. I'm leaving here, and I want to tell you something. When once I walk out that door, you'll never see me again. Now, this is your last chance. Are you going to give me that money? No. <laughs> This is your last chance, Alice. Are you gonna give me the money? No. <laughs> gonna give me the money. <laughs> if I don't go in with that dough tomorrow, somebody's gonna grab that hot dog stand ahead of me. Now listen, Ralph. We can't throw that money away on some foolish idea. That money is for our old age. After all, you'll be very glad when we're 65 or 70 to have a nest egg. A nest egg? When I'm 70, I won't have the strength to hatch it. <laughs> Now look, when I married you, you promised to love, honor, and obey me. Now, 
I'm ordering you to give me that money. Ah, shut up. <laughs> Will you let me have it? 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 Oh, I'd love to let you have it. <laughs> Come on, Alice. Please let me have the money. Ralph. I said no, and the answer is still no. Think I need your money? I don't need your money. I can get my own money. I'll hock something. Where's my mandolin? Have you forgotten last New Year's Eve? I'll wear it to pieces. Maybe I can fix it. There must be something around here I can hock. How about your bowling ball? Are you crazy? <laughs> Wait a minute, give me your wedding ring. Ralph! That's right, the last time I tried to hock it, we couldn't get anything on it anyway. <laughs> That's exactly why I want to buy this hot dog stand. Exactly. Just so I can make some money, so I can buy something, so I'll have something to hock when I need it. Would you please stop acting like an idiot? I'm an idiot, huh? An idiot, just because I want to be a success. All right. I don't need your money. The only reason I asked you to put the money in was so that we could keep the hot dog stand in the family. But that's okay, Alice. I got friends. I got good friends. Friends that'll help me out. I'll borrow the money. I'll open that hot dog stand. And on opening day, when it's jam-packed with customers and photographers are taking pictures all over the joint, you won't be in the pictures. No, from this blow, I may never recover. <laughs> I'm sorry I failed you, pal. Ah, you didn't fail me. <clears throat> Same thing happened to me. Alice wouldn't give me the money. I don't understand it. Trixie won't let you have the money. Alice won't let me have the money. Boy, women certainly are stupid. Yeah. Especially the ones that married us. <laughs> we gotta get that dough. We gotta borrow it from somebody. One of my friends. Hey, wait a minute. What? The other day I met Jimmy Dolan. I asked him how he was doing. He says, great. He says, I'm rolling in money. It's coming in hand over fist. The guy with all that loot, he'll lend us the dough right away. Wait a minute. Here's no. Hey, huh? Dolan. Don't worry, pal. Okay. We'll get that dough. Okay. We'll be in business yet. Just leave it to me. Hello? Huh? What? Oh. Yes, ma'am. Come on, Ralph. Phone's disconnected. <laughs> well, I uh, guess that means we gotta go over to his house and borrow the money. What, are you crazy or something? If he had any money, he would have had the phone paid for. Oh. Uh, wait a minute. I got it, I got it. I, I, I loaned the guy some money last week. I'll call him up. Hey, that's great. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's not such a good idea after all. What do you mean? It cost me a dime to call him. He only owes me a nickel. <laughs> hey, that reminds me. About five years ago, I lent a cousin of mine, George, $25. Every time he sees me, he never mentions it. But I need that, though, now, and I'm gonna get it. Oh, boy, $25. That'll start the ball rolling. Don't worry. Hello, Aunt Mary. Will you put George on the phone? This is Ralph. Huh? I don't care if he is eating dinner. Tell him to get on the phone. Why, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a dead beat. Yeah. Oh, hello, George. This is Ralph. Yeah. Uh, you remember about five years ago, there's a little matter between us of about $25. You know, George, if there's one thing I can't stand, it's a dead... Huh? Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be seeing you, George. Uh, give my best to Aunt Mary, huh? Okay, George. Bye. What happened this time? I didn't lend him the 25. You did? He lent it to me. <laughs> Forgot all about it. Well, wait a minute. If he's such an easy touch, let's go borrow some more money from him. Nah. I got one ace in the hole left. Who? Oh. My Uncle Matt. This guy is loaded. He's got plenty of cabbage, but in order to get a penny out of him, you gotta put a stick of dynamite under him. I hate to do it, but it's an emergency. I'll get it from him. Hello? Oh, hi, Aunt Kathy. Listen, will you put Uncle Matt on the phone, please? This is Ralph. He's out in the garage. Well, would you go out in the garage and tell him to come to the phone? Thank you, Aunt Kath. Boy, I'm telling you, this guy is a real boot with a buck. Yeah? Boy, when I was a kid, I remember one time I wanted a nickel for an ice cream cone. He made me mow the whole lawn all around the house before he gave me the nickel. Jeez. Then one time I was graduating, my mother wanted to borrow some money from him, you know, to get me a pair of white flannels to graduate in. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't give it to her. I was the only kid in the whole class graduated in knickers. <laughs> How about a bum like that? Ooh. Not only that, but when my brother Willie, you know, he went in the used tire business and he went bankrupt. There was a victim him out of the house. All he wanted, 30 bucks for the rent. Goes to, you know, Uncle Matt, he says, could I have the 30 bucks? Uncle Matt says, no. Poor guy was thrown out in the street, very embarrassing. All this furniture laying out there, people looking at him. I tell you, this Uncle Matt is a bum. Jeez. Wait a minute, I hear somebody coming. Hello? Is this you? You're a bum, drop dead with your money. <laughs> Cramden, I'm telling you one thing. When they made you, they threw away the mold. <laughs> we got one chance left to get the money. What's that? We got to go to a bank and borrow the $600. Got to borrow. But what bank? Let's see. Well, we can go to the First National. Corning. <laughs> what are you doing in there? We now have to collect only $599.90. Every penny counts. <laughs> Let's go. Boy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Boy. Hey, hey, hey. What a classy joint. You know, this is only one of the branches. They got a couple of hundred of these places. You know something that's good for us? What do you mean? If we don't get the $600 here, we'll borrow a few bucks from each of the other branches. <laughs> Look, I just want to impress upon you one thing. When this guy Foster comes in, we got to impress him. I don't know, I don't know. What do you think I got dressed up for? Look pretty snappy, eh? Yeah, you look pretty good. Why did you have to wear that tie? What's the matter with it? Look at the stain on it. That's all right. It's pot roast. Maybe you think I'm doing very, very good. Well, keep your coat buttoned and cover it up. Oh, here. Here's a cigar. I got one for you and one for oh, me. Good. When he comes in here, we got to look like a couple of prosperous businessmen. Okay. Well, light up now. Hey, hey, that's a pretty good cigar. I know it is, and I want to warn you about something else. If it looks like we're not going to get the loan at this bank, put the cigar out fast. We might have to finish it at another bank. <laughs> There's one more thing I want to tell you. Our entire future depends upon this interview. So let me do all the talking. And above all, don't tell him that we're keeping our regular jobs. Why not? Well, if he doesn't think that we're going to devote our entire time to the hot dog stand, he isn't going to give us the loan. Okay, I won't read a word. Okay, pal. 
Well, he ought to be in here any minute. Not a bad cigar at that, is it? Yeah. Sorry, gentlemen, to be late. Please be seated. Oh, yes, thank you. How do you do, Mr. Foster? Well, now, gentlemen, what do you want to see me about? Well, you see, uh, we'd like to make a loan. Well, as we say in financial circles, loans are the lifeblood of a bank. Oh, well, that's good, because we certainly are in need of a transfusion. Ha, 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 Well, now, let's get down to business. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Go right ahead. I'll answer them. All right. Now, if you'll just give me your names and addresses. Uh, my name is Ralph Cramden, and he's Ed Norton. We both live at the same place, 358 and a half Chauncey Street. Mother's maiden name? My mother's maiden name? Elizabeth Wharton. Your mother's name, Mr. Norton? Mrs. Norton. <laughs> you certainly are a stoop. He means your mother's name before she was married. How do I know? Ever since I know her, she's been married. <laughs> All the numbskulls I have ever run into in my life. All right, now we'll just skip that question. Don't excite yourself, Mr. Cramden. Don't mind him. Don't pay any attention to him, Mr. Foster. What a crouch. <laughs> now, uh, what is the amount of this note, uh, this loan that you'd like to apply well, for? Well, we'd like to get about $600. You see, we want to open up a hot dog stand in Jersey. I see. $600. Well, now, tell me, what are your assets? Do you have a bank account? Oh, yes. The both of us have bank accounts. Well, then why don't you use that money for the business? Uh, well, you see, um, uh, well, the truth of the matter is, uh, uh, our wives won't let us. They think we're a couple of dopes for opening up a hot dog stand. <laughs> hey, do you scream? <laughs> it's good to have a sense of humor when you're dealing with the public. I'd like to mm. bat you one right in the mouth. <laughs> Well, now we come to an all-important question. Tell me, Mr. Cramden, have you had any uh, previous experience in this uh, hot dog business? Well, our, uh... Right, tell him, Rob. Yeah. Well, uh, you see, uh... Well, let's put it this way. No. <laughs> well, I must say, uh, starting in a business without experience looks uh, pretty risky to me. Well, now, uh, just a minute. Uh, well, I may ask you a question as uh, one businessman to another businessman. Uh, just what experience did you have to become an executive here in this bank before you started? Well, I was majored for four years in economics at Yale. I studied at the Wharton Business School at the University of Pennsylvania for two years and the banking school at Harvard. And I started in right here as an errand boy, which makes a total of 38 years in the banking business. Does that answer your question? Ask him another question. <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, from the uh, facts that you've given me, uh, I gravely doubt that I'll be able to approve that loan. Uh, <coughs> We'd better save these cigars for the next bank. <laughs> Gee, mister. Mr. Forster, if you only knew just how much this means to us. Yes, well, I'm uh, sorry. Uh, some later date, perhaps. Yeah, uh, well, come on, Ralph. Uh, look, listen, just ain't in the cards, that's all. I, uh, I just hope that we can get our jobs back on a day shift again, that's all. Day shift? What do you mean by that? Ah, uh, oh, uh, I, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I blew it. Nah, it doesn't make any difference. Sounded like a good idea at first, anyway. You see, he works for the Department of Sewers, and I drive a bus all day. And we're going to have our jobs shifted to nighttime so we could devote all our time in the daytime to the hot dog stand. Well, now, just a minute. Do you mean to say that you were going to work night and day? Just till it got started. Well, all I can say is that any two men of such integrity could hardly be a risk. Here, will you just give this slip to Mr. Porter at the loan desk, and he'll take care of it. You mean you're going to give us the loan? Certainly. Gee, Mr. Foster. Gee. If, if you're ever on Route 22 and you want a hot dog, just remember us, Ralph and Ed's. That's right, in the market for hot dog, Ed and Ralph. <laughs> It'll be my pleasure, and good luck to both of you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very Mr. Much. Foster. Thank oh, you very uh, much. Uh, we won't be uh, needing these anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Believe me, Trixie, I wish the boys all the luck in the world. The only thing is that I don't know whether they know enough about running a hot dog stand. Yeah, maybe. But I still think we did the right thing in coming out here to help them on their opening today. Oh, sure. Listen, maybe we better go inside and you stack up some rolls and I'll yeah. put some hot dogs on the uh, grill there in case somebody, you know, might come by. Wisecracks for the customers. Paint the sign, Ralph? Well, we went down to the crossroads where that big rock was. We were going to paint an arrow on it saying this way to uh, Ralph and Ed's hot dog stand, but he got a better idea. Tell him about it, Ralph. When we're down there, Ford has got a great big sign, a big billboard. So he says, why not put the arrow on the Ford sign pointing to our place and saying to Ralph and Ed's hot dog stand? What's so great about that? The sign advertises Ford cars, not our place. Yeah, but he fixed that. He changed one word and it's perfect. Well, what does it say? The sign now says, there's a Frankfurter in your future. <laughs> Not bad, huh? <clears throat> well, the trouble is, I'm afraid it's going to cost me an invitation to the next Ford Festival. <laughs> Will you get rid of that can of paint? Oh, yeah. Put it oh, by the way, Alice, you know, you've always been telling me since I started this hot dog stand business that we were going to be a flop. Well, as we were walking up the road, I saw something that's going to assure the success of this place. What was that? Well, as we were walking down the road, we saw them putting up a big building. It's a great big thing. It's gonna be a factory or something. So we have nothing to worry about from here on in. Perfect setup. Things go slow here, we can always get a job down at the factory. <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean, while they're putting up the building, we'll get all the workers over here for their lunch. Then when the building's up, we'll get all the employees to eat oh. lunch here. Oh. Well, we gotta get the business from somewhere. I haven't seen a car go by since we got here. Will you stop your crab and it's early yet. Incidentally, we better get organized. When the rush starts, we want to be prepared. Yeah, okay. Now, we'll practice some orders. I'll go in the back and make them up, and you let me have them. I'll call out the orders here. Will you girls get out of the way so we can work? Certainly. <laughs> All set? All right. Go ahead, pal. Uh, I like a hot dog on a roll with mustard. Not that way. Do it fast with the initials, like I told you the other day. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, H-D-O-R-W-M. H-D-O-R-W-M, hot dog on a roll with mustard. Coming up. A-P-W-C. A-P-W-C, apple pie and coffee coming up. You're doing great. Go ahead. R-O-L, K-T, and S-F-R-I-M-L, D-G-O-L, K-R-G-T-L-N-S-T, yes. Now, what is that? Alphabet soup. <laughs> You're going slowly but surely, pal. If a guy shows up here in a white suit looking for you, don't think he's a chef. <laughs> All right, you get out here. Call out the orders. I'll make them up. I'll do anything. <laughs> H-D-O-W-M-P-O-C. Uh, Could you give me a hint? <laughs> it's a hot dog on a roll with mustard, piccalilli, onions, and chili. Oh. Hot dog on a roll, piccalilli, onions. <laughs> hot dog on a roll, piccalilli, onions, and Here you are, sir. Compliments of the house. Thank you very much. You're stupid. You forgot the Frankfurter. <laughs> Suppose you did that to a customer. Well. What customer? Nobody's been by here in two hours. It's still early. I'm hot. So am I. Hey, wait a minute. I think I hear something. Maybe it's a customer. A customer? Quick, Norton. Get him out. You ready? Yeah. All right. Are they coming? Yeah, they're coming. I think your rush has started, Ralph. Stand up straight. Yeah. <laughs> Do something like that again, and 
and you'll get yours. You'll get yours! <laughs> no, don't get excited, will you? The next thing that goes by and doesn't stop may be a car. Will you keep quiet? Wait, 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 wait. I, I hear a car. Uh, stop it. Look, uh, go behind. You serve. I'll take care of the cut. Will you sit down make it look like it's busy? Well, how do you do, sir? <laughs> how do you do? How do you do? What can we do for you? Well, I would like a hot dog with mustard. Hot dog with mustard coming up? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're uh, very fortunate. You're the first one to get one of our hot dogs. This is our opening day. Is that so? Well, yes, sir. congratulations. Thank you very much. Here you are, 10 cents, please. There you are. Yes, sir. That's the first one we served. You know, to look at me, I guess you'd never think I was driving a bus yesterday. <laughs> Is that so? Yeah. I was working in the sewer. It's <laughs> really funny, but I'm not hungry anymore. <laughs> oh, it's getting late. I, I got to get back to work. Bye-bye. Uh, thanks very much for dropping in. Come again. I suspected it before, but I was never sure. You're nuts! Now, you just wait a minute, Ralph. It's not all Norton's fault. And if you're talking about crazy, you know, this whole idea of you two running a hot dog stand is completely crazy. How you could possibly expect to work at your regular job all night, every night, and then come here and work all day long at a business that you know nothing about is completely beyond me. Is that so? If there's anybody crazy around here, it's you. Would you mind leaving me alone? Wait a minute. Here comes another customer. Get ready. Yeah. Sit down. Sit down. Make it look like we're very busy. Well, how do you do? Howdy. Uh, what's your pleasure? Yeah, my pleasure is ski ball, but I come here for some food. Yeah, I'd like to have a hot dog, container of coffee, take along with me. Oh, hot dog and container of coffee, mm -hmm. coming right up. It's the ORWM coffee to go. Uh, you're new here, huh? Oh, yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, we just opened up today. Uh -huh. This is our opening day. Uh, what do you do? Well, usually, not much anything. But uh, right now, I'm watching for that building they're putting up down the road. Oh, oh, that big building down the road, huh? Looks like quite a building, I suppose. Uh, a lot of people are going to be working there. Well, I see 30, 40, give or take a few. 30 or 40? Mm-hmm. Hey, I... I'll yeah. be 30 cents, please. Hey, uh, hey, you. Did you hear that? I heard it. 30 or 40 people. This place is going to be a flop, huh? 30 or 40 people are coming here every day to eat their lunch. Uh, I uh, wouldn't count on that. And why not? Yeah, that place they're building down the road, Howard Johnson's. <laughs> Did you hear that? Who's gonna prove who wrong around here? Again. I had to go into the hot dog business. I wouldn't listen to you. I never listen to you. Just do what I please. Just what I think is right, I go right ahead and do. Here we are. A hot dog stand on my hand. I had to borrow to get it. I'll have to borrow to pay it back. I'll have to work night and day in the bus to get the money. No, you won't, Ralph. We'll pay it back out of the joint account. Yeah, but you said that... Honey, if this isn't an emergency, what is? There's no doubt about it, sweetie. You are the greatest. <laughs>